Good morning, everyone. Uh, today we'll be seeing about the anatomy and the physiology of the vestibular system. Balance. If I have to say that my hearing is normal, assessment of the uh, auditory system is enough. With those result, uh, results, I can say that my hearing is normal. And the same goes with the visual system. If we assess the visual system, we can comment on the visual system. But there is no single system that is responsible for balance. It is more than one system that is responsible for attaining balance. Uh, we have three systems which are uh, interacting together to bring balance. The first one is the vestibular system, and then your visual system, and then the skeletal and the muscular system. The skeletal and muscular system, which is responsible for the movement of the body, uh, have uh, a receptors called the proprioceptive receptors, which help in sending signals to the brain regarding the orientation of that particular extremity in space. For example, if I'm trying to raise my hand, and uh, I need to know how much I have raised hand. I need, is it uh, till my neck or till my eye or above my head? Without looking at my hand, closing my eyes, I can say that how much uh, I have raised my hands. And this information of where my hand is in the space is transmitted by these proprioceptive receptors. During dark, when it's completely dark and our vision denied, we can easily eat anything, okay? From uh, uh, picking the food and taking it to the mouth, it doesn't require any vision because, because the proprioceptive receptors that is working, uh, we can easily detect the motion of our hand and without any difficulty, we can take it to the mouth, okay? So we need all these three inputs. Vestibular inputs, we need visual inputs and proprioceptive inputs to bring about balance. If any one of these uh, inputs are compromised, if they don't send the proper signals, then we are going to have imbalance and eventually fall. You are looking at a picture where a person uh, is enjoying a race and the race car is moving from his right to the left and his eye is fixed on the car, and he's turning his head from right to left to follow the car. Two things has happened. One is that his head has turned from right to left, okay? And his eye is fixed on the object, okay? When he turned his eye, the eyeballs didn't actually collapse. I mean, it is not like moving right, left. It was fixed on the car. Okay, so this happens, the head is moving at one speed and the eye has to know the speed to fix its uh, image on the car. Okay, so to happen, we need the integration of the visual and the vestibular inputs. Okay, so you all know him. Uh, this is a famous comedy by Buddy Will, where he will be trying to stand without holding anything, without touching anything on a moving bus, balancing himself. How does he do? Not just Vadi Velu, many of us would have tried this in our once in, at least once in a lifetime that we will try to balance in a moving bus without touching anything. These are a few strategies which we use. The first one is using the angle, okay? So when we are trying to fall, we will first try to push ourselves with the ankle. And if it's not working, and if someone is trying to push us through the uh, swimming pool or into something which is a uh, uh, kind of pit, we'll first try to bend ourselves to balance. And the other strategy is when you look at a child who is trying to learn how to walk, if the child is uh, about to fall, the child will try to sit. It's trying to lower its center of gravity. So this is suspension. And the last is to have a step ahead. Like use your two legs, you know, try to balance it. So these are a few strategies which we try to attain balance, okay? For this to happen, we need integration of our vestibular inputs and proprioceptive inputs. Only if these two interact, we'll be able to achieve this. 
So this is the block diagram. The block diagram of uh, the reception is uh, we have three inputs, the uh, visual inputs, and then we have vestibular inputs, and we have proprioceptive inputs from both sides, right and left, reaching the next level of uh, processing. Just like the cochlea sends its auditory information to the cochlear nucleus, we have our vestibular inputs being sent from the vestibular end organs to the vestibular nuclei. Likewise, we have our retina sending inputs to the inferior auditory complex. So uh, the vestibular nuclei has a very good connections with few of the other nuclei. Uh, it has good connections with the cerebellum, okay? Uh, because the cerebellum is responsible for the movement of the body and uh, it is well connected with the acclomotor nuclei. The acclomotor nuclei is responsible for controlling the movement of eyeball and then uh, anterior horn cell of the spinal cord. Okay, and all this information are integrated together and sent to the next level to the thalamus and cortex for perception. So what, how will I uh, know that what has happened? It is the cortex that is giving me the idea of what has just happened, okay? Um, someone had a fall, okay? And we need to know what actually happened. So the cortex will give us the information and it will find, it, it, it will actually get an idea that we didn't have information from this part or that part. So the perception of what actually happened regarding the balance will be provided by the cortex. Labyrinth. Labyrinth means a compartment. Okay, it's like a sack. We have bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth. The bony labyrinth is the outer covering, which is, uh, and then you have your membranous labyrinth is inside the bony labyrinth. The bony labyrinth is filled with perilymph, and the endolymph, I mean, uh, the membranous labyrinth is filled with the endolymph. Labyrinth is a collective term. It has your vestibular end organs as well as hearing end organs. In the west, just in the hearing uh, end organs is your cochlea, okay? Where the vestibular end organs, we have semicircular canals and otolith organs. There are three semicircular canals and two otolith organs. The semicircular canals are responsible for angular acceleration, which means turning or angular movements. The otolith organs are responsible for the linear motion, going front, back, sideways, and uh, up, down. All these six uh, ways of movement, uh, it is detected by the otolith organs. The semicircular canals is for the angular motion. Okay, so there are three uh, uh, semicircular canals which detect the angular motion in three different planes. So anterior one, posterior one, and horizontal one. Uh, and then you have otolith organs as utricle and sacu. Uh, now we are looking at uh, ear model with its seal removed so that uh, the semicircular canals, the cochlea, all these things are exposed. Uh, we have our semicircular canals here. Okay, the horizontal ones, the anterior ones, the posterior one is behind, which is not visible. And uh, we have a cochlea and we have a vestibular nerve. We have a utricle and uh, saccule inside, which is again hidden. And all these nerves, the cochlear vestibular nerve, as well as the facial nerve is exiting the internal auditory meatus. Okay, we can appreciate it here. Okay, we are looking at uh, labyrinth alone now. So, uh, with this diagram, it is easy for us to understand the anterior semicircular canal is responsible for movement of head, front and back. Uh, if someone is telling yes, so the anterior semicircular canal is the one that is responsible to detect that motion. And uh, this motion, anterior front and back, is called as pitch. Okay. And uh, next we have our horizontal semicircular canal or the lateral semicircular canal. Uh, 
which will detect the horizontal motions, I mean turning left and right, uh, as if we are telling no. And this motion of left and right is called as yaw, Y-A-W. And we have the other one, this uh, posterior semicircular canal, which is responsible for head movements tilting towards right and left as if we are trying to touch our both shoulders with our head. And this movement is called as roll. Okay. So if you could notice, all these three semicircular canals are uh, perpendicular to each other. They have 90 degree between them. You take any of the two uh, semicircular canals, they are 90 degree in relation. Okay. If you look at the orientation of the semicircular canal in the skull, uh, we see that the horizontal canal is actually not horizontal. It is not flat. It is a little bit inclined by 30 degree. Okay, it is not flat. It is inclined by 30 degree. Also, if you look at the anterior semicircular canal, which is responsible for the uh, yes movement, front and back, it is not actually front. It is not actually straight. It is little bit towards the right and left. Okay, so you are looking at the anterior canal of the right side. Okay, so actually it is not straight. It is inclined. Okay, it is moving in this direction. It is not straight. So what is parallel to it is the posterior semicircular canal of the left side. If you look at the posterior semicircular canal of the right side, the parallel thing is the anterior semicircular canal of the left. Okay. So when we have an input, if a person is turning towards the right side, one side we are going to have an excitatory stimulation and the other side we are going to have an inhibitory responses. Okay. So these semicircular canals have to be paired each other so that the motion, the, the plane of the motion is uh, exactly understood by the brain. If a person is turning towards the right side, the right side will send excitatory responses to the brain and the left will send inhibitory responses to the brain. Okay, so by doing this, we understand that the head has moved from to the right side. Okay. When we look at the anterior semicircular canal, if there is a movement, if, it, if a movement is detected in the right anterior canal and it is excitatory in function, uh, we need an inhibitor response from the other side, from the left side. Actually, in the horizontal, the horizontal of the right and the horizontal semicircular canal of the left send the signals when there is a movement. But with regard to anterior and posterior, two anterior and two posteriors are not paired. They are paired differently. The anterior and the posterior of the other side is paired, which means if your right anterior semicircular canal has detected an excitatory movement, then your left posterior canal will send inhibitory responses. Likewise, if your left anterior canal is detecting your excitatory motion, the right posterior canal will send inhibitory motion. Okay, okay. Also, if the posterior canal of the right side is finding an excitatory movement, then the anterior semicircular canal on the left side will be sending inhibitory responses. Okay.